Hello and welcome to the third video tutorial in this series made for 24 hour answers on how to become a better programmer. This time we'll be focusing on how to control the flow and execution in a function in C and C++, but most of what we'll be looking at, and certainly the underlying concepts, apply to any programming language. On screen now is the main function, which you should be familiar with at this point. This time, however, I've written another function and called it from the main function. One key point to grasp right now is how such additional functions are defined and written. First, let's take a look at if function. You'll notice at the beginning of the program, outside the main function and near the include statements, that the if function has been declared. This acts as a hint to the compiler to tell it that this particular file contains this function. The hint in question is known as the function's signature, and these signatures specify three key things. Firstly, the function's return type. Our if function returns no information and so the type is void. You can compare this to the main function, which returns a type int, which you may remember represents an error code. Functions in C can return any variable type or data structure, which we'll cover later, and in C++ this even extends further to include objects. With the exception of C++ constructors and destructors, again don't worry about this for now, functions must always have a return type or void specified. When your function returns a type, you can use that function as part of a variable assignment. For example, if a function returns a type int, you might write a line of code like this commented line here. When the program runs, the function will be called to find the return type and then that value will be assigned to the variable. Secondly in the function signature is the function name. Like variables, you may name a function with any combination of letters, numbers and underscores, so long as you don't begin the name with a number. The function name is how you will reference your function elsewhere in the program. As a piece of good practice advice, make sure your function names are descriptive, but not overly so. Ideally, a person should be able to tell what a function does just by reading the name. The final part of the function signature is the list of variables in brackets that the function takes. You specify the type of each variable and then a name for that variable, such as in the main function. In our case, we have no variable for our if function, so we simply leave the brackets empty. If you had specified variables, however, you would be able to use them throughout your function just by writing the variable name, as if you had declared them locally. The function itself demonstrates a set of simple if statements. The purpose of an if statement is to create a conditional fork in your program. As the programmer, you provide a condition, such as whether two variables are the same, and a block of code to be executed if that condition is true. If the condition is false, you can also include an else clause to your if statement, which will be executed in that case. That's what's happening here. The if statement reads if 1 equals 1, which of course it must, and so the statement in the brackets of the if block will be executed. The bracket in the else blocks, however, will not be executed as the code stands. Beneath this is a small block of code showing you the not operation, and reads if 1 does not equal 2. When writing conditions for if statements, there are a few things you must bear in mind. Firstly, when comparing whether two values are equal, you must write the equals symbol twice. The reason for this is that, as we have previously seen, a single equals is used for a variable assignment. It sets the variable to a value. The double equals is used for a comparison. I don't want to confuse you too much at this point, but suffice to say it's a big and difficult to notice error if you accidentally use a single equals in an if statement. What will in fact happen is the assignment you have written would take place. Furthermore, the logical value of this assignment would resolve to true. As a result, after the variable assignment, the code following your if condition would be executed. In short, take care to use double equals in logical conditions such as this. You can also achieve the opposite meaning of to equals, not equal to, with the exclamation mark before a single equals sign. Similarly, you can make use of greater than or less than symbols, although you only need one, and even place these before single equals signs to produce greater than or equal to and less than or equal to statements. The next part to notice is that you can chain these conditions together with AND or OR statements. Right here we have an AND statement, the double ampersand. Again, make sure you use two rather than one, which has a different meaning. Whilst I don't want to dive too far into Boolean logic at this point in the series, suffice to say that AND statements are checked from the leftmost to the rightmost. If any of these statements fails or is false, the program stops checking the rest of the statement. 
Thus, if we rewrote this to read if 1 does not equal 1 and 1 does not equal 2, the second part, 1 doesn't equal 2, would never even be checked, as it obviously cannot be the case that 1 does not equal 1. Furthermore, we can write an OR statement by using two of these pipe symbols. In this case, both statements would be checked before the IF statement was resolved, thus modifying the last example, if 1 equals 1 or 1 equals 2, would resolve to true, even though 1 and 2 aren't the same. You can actually construct complex statements using brackets in this law. Two conditions, each comprised of AND statements, can be joined together via an OR statement, and so on. You should try modifying statements to get a feel for how this logic works, as understanding it is really one of the most important skills in programming, and it remains largely at language agnostic. By and large, that's the crux of the matter when it comes to functions and if statements. What you should do is try modifying the if-else statements and extending them yourself. Adding new variables, and if you're feeling ambitious, try this. Modify the if function to return an integer. 1 or 0, depending on whether the statement evaluated to true or false, and then print that integer on screen from the main function. As always, remember you can post any questions in the comments section below. Thank you.